Hey guys, Shane here. So welcome to this other inbox review of you guessed it, another Dirty Sherman. And this time it is from Dragon, reference number 61A3, and it's their M4A3 E8 Thunderbolt 7. So this kit was released back in 2006, so it's been out for a while. And I want to say a big shout out and thank you to Ernest from Canada, who uh, was so kind to trade me for this kit, as I've been looking for this particular model for a while. Um, it's kind of hard to come by for a reasonable price. So I, I traded him uh, a Tiger kit, which might make some of you cry, because why would you trade a Tiger for a Sherman? Because a Sherman is the more superior fighting machine, that's why. <laughs> Everybody be friends, it's okay, oh, I'm only messing. They're both good in their own ways. <laughs> anyway, so this is Thunderbolt 7. So there's actually kind of an importance behind this machine. Um, so Thunderbolt Bolt 7 and the preceding six Shermans before it that bore the same name is Creighton Abrams' um, personal Sherman. And Creighton Abrams is the namesake of the M1 Abrams Modern MBT, which is the main battle tank in current service with the US Army and US Marine Corps, as well as some exported nations that are basically allies of the US. I think Australia uses this, uh, Jordan has them as well, I believe. So this kit is an M4A3 E8 with um, HVSS suspension, as well as some very interesting applique armor. Um, as you can see here, it's got some uh, welded on plates, which I actually believe is the front glacis plate from another Sherman that they've literally bolted onto the front of theirs, as well as some added terrace and side armor. So as always, we get a pretty attractive box art. We have some imaging of the decal and marking callouts. So we get uh, four markings, one of them being Thunderbolt 7 and some other um, E8 variants. We also get some photo etch, some cartograph decals. We get some CAD drawings of the various um, features of the kit. Apparently we get some spring and brass tubing for the HVSS suspension. So perhaps this is workable, we'll see when we get to building this kit, as well as some other CG drawings um, of the various kit features. So we'll have a look and see what we get in the box. So as you can see, we do get quite a bit of plastic in this kit. Everything is pre-bagged. This is back when Dragon still did their Dragon cards, rather than the bullshit they gave us now. Uh, we have everything sealed away, we have separate rubber, um, um, rims if you will for the HVS road wheels which is always good that just makes um, painting a bit easier you can paint these separately and then slot them in and on a nicer note we also get an aluminium gun barrel some springs for the HVSS suspension as well as some um, pistons for the suspension as well so let's uh, have a proper look and see what we get in the box so starting with the instructions so for once we don't have a massive amount of blue. I'm already beginning to notice um, parts from their M4A2 as well as M4A1 sprues here that if you looked at my uh, A176 Operation Cobra uh, might be a bit familiar to you. So step one we begin with the um, HVSS suspension system as well as the deflector. These are pretty um, complex little assemblies actually. Normally um, Dragon sometimes, especially with the FIFSS suspension, tends to simplify this. It does not look like they did so with, with this kit. So that's going to be interesting to see how this FIFSS um, suspension buggy builds up. Especially when we get around to building the Asuka models version of this kit in the near future. Ironically, um, Asuka does have uh, Thunderbolt 7 uh, apparently on pre-release at the moment. Um, I'm not going to bother buy it, just no point having two of the same kit, but I do have the normal um, A3 E876 in the stash that I already reviewed, so it'll be interesting to see how both of them build up. Then we move on to step two, we're adding in our, um, our engine deck with its single hatch, which is synonymous with the A3. So again, as I always say, if anyone's trying to build a movie Acre Fury, uh, 
all the A3s are all wrong. Um, Fury is actually an A2 E8. E um, it's just that's pretending to be an A3. So if you want to make a, a movie accurate um, Fury, try to find if you, in your spares the A2 version, which is basically this plate without the access panel or the access hatch and just two def uh, deflectors. It's not a big thing, but if you if you're trying to make a, an accurate one, that's the easiest way to stand them out, as well as your engine deck. Then we're moving on to step four after adding in our transmission cover, which would be interesting to see what the, the join is like there. Then we're adding in our little Joe auxiliary exhaust here for the Jenny, which is this little piece here. Not too many parts going on here, so it shouldn't be too bad. We're adding in our return rollers and dry sprocket. So on the HVSS uh, suspension system, the return or the idler, should I say, actually does have a rubber rim, whereas on the uh, Fifi SS it does not, it's bare metal. Moving on to step 5, we're looking in on our engine deck, again our A3 style engine deck. Oh, oh I wish you hadn't done that. So they're having us remove these two plates here and sand them down, typical dragon style because they couldn't be arse actually tooling an A3 upper hull. Um, so this is from the A2 and I think the M4 has the same one too if I remember correctly but I do know the A2 has this type of plate. So we're going to sand that off, drill a lot of holes. Okay that's a bit disappointing. Again it's not a big deal but again, it's still a little bit unnecessary though it is 2006. However Dragon are still asking us to do even more now in 2017 so a lot hasn't changed it would appear. Then we're moving on to adding the Pioneer tools, the brush guards for the convoy lights, the lifting eyes, as well as the fuel cap fillers and the filters. We have our one piece um, storage rack for the rear deck here, as well as the cleaning rods for the gun barrel. Again, this is a very simple assembly. The uh, Tasca or Asuka model kits are very, very well detailed on this part. Again, it's not a, um, a big thing, you can get away with it, but still. Uh, again, it's a sign of the times. Once again, Dragon has us cutting off parts here on the front laces, the headlight mounts and the travel lock. Again, so they're probably using everything basically from the M A A2 and A3 kind of as a common mold here. We should be kind of used to this carry on from them. Then we're cutting out parts again here, these two wedges. Imagine it's probably for the deflector for the A2, I'd imagine. So, off to a good start, I see. Uh, I did see a very interesting article on WordPress of a guy trying to build this kit, and the article was uh, titled Why I Almost Quit Modeling. So, either that's very ominous that I'm about to lose my mind trying to build this kit, or he just had a very bad day. I'll have a link actually to that article in the description of this video for a bit of. Um, for a second opinion of this kit, but I'd imagine this could potentially be a bit of a tricky kit if um, if you're not careful. So now we're adding the photo etch extended mud um, fenders, which are basically the extensions for the HVSS because that's um, suspension buggies wider than the FIFSS. We also have photo etch mud um, fenders here, if you will, or um, whatever you want to call those. Like, I'm totally after blanking. <laughs> So it has us cut away the, <laughs> the the travel lock hinges just to replace them. I, I, there must be a difference between the A2 and the A3 travel lock. Then we have this large kind of storage rack applique armor style plate here, which is basically only found on um, Thunderbolt 7 and using the logic of the um, US Armour divisions that if one vehicle in a unit has that type of applique most of the rest of them will have it too because it's normally um, a unit wide upgrade. Individual tank crews aren't allowed to do this on their own uh, initiative they were normally ordered from a higher command structure so if you're if you're putting like log armors onto one of your tanks put them onto all of them in the diorama for example as for accuracy's sake if one vehicle in the unit has it the rest of them will have it too. And that's not me talking on my arse, that's from both Steve Saloga and Nicholas Morin, who are kind of the US armor guys, so we can trust those historians. Um, we'll come on to our direct vision cupola. 
we have our gunner's direct um, side periscope. We do have an aluminium and one piece slide molded gun barrel here for 76mm, both with and without muzzle brake. So that's good, you can always throw them into your spare bits box. They're good gun barrels, so very good gun barrels with um, a very light seam line that can be removed with just a little bit of sanding. We have our gun mantlet, very similar to the M4A176 that we're building at the moment. With how this comes together, it's a little bit delicate. I'm actually at the land up gluing mine in place, but we'll cover that when we get to um, the next video for that build, which is Lafayette Tools personal mount. Also, we have a very unique uh, 30 cal um, 1919 machine gun that actually welds on top of the gunner's direct vision sight or uh, periscope sight, should I say. That's uh, again synonymous with the Thunderbolt 7 Creighton Abrams vehicle. Most people will model Thunderbolt 7 with both this weapon and the 50 cal on the normal mount. However, the only photographs I've seen of it only seems to have this. I, 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 I've not seen any photographs with the 50 cal as well as the 30 cal. So um, again, I might be wrong there, but that's just with the photographs I've seen. Again, if you guys have seen photographs of it, let me know. So we have two options of mount here for the uh, 50 cal HB. Okay. So we have the, the late version, which is like I said, it's near the rear of the turret. And this is like the T23 turret. We actually have two options of T23. We have with the small loader's hatch and with the large hatch. So we do have two upper um, turrets, uh, turret hats, which is good. Again, we're going to have a seam line that we're going to have to blend with some liquid putty because it, as we all know at this point, all Sherman turrets were all uh, cast, so they were one piece, so there should be no seam lines in them. We have the um, swivel periscope with brush guard and armoured cover for the uh, large style loader's hatch, depending what variant you're building. And then we move on to step 12, and our, this is the final step. We do have magic track on this kit, which is, I've almost forgotten what magic track looks like at this point. So we have our magic track. Oh, what type of track is this? Oh, I have to look that up. I can never remember the HVSS track types. And we have 80 links per side. And then we have our board applique armor that sits in um, the, the transmission cover. And then we have our markings. We have Thunderbolt 7, 37, Tank Battalion, 4th Armoured Division, Germany 45, which is Creighton's vehicle. We have 4th Armoured Division, Germany 45 again. We have 35th, Tank Battalion, 4th Armoured, uh, Bastogne, 1945. So that's like the Bastogne breakout or um, relief column, if you will. We have 31st, Tank Battalion, 11th Armoured. Germany 45. So they're all pretty much late vehicles. They're all 45. And that is our instructions. So not too many steps. It does have us removing a lot of plastic from places, which is a little bit worrying. But nothing that we can't handle. So we'll have a look at our dragon card. Again, something that we're not really used to seeing anymore, as these are very much a thing of the past. It almost reminds me of a time when Dragon actually cared. So we have our clear sprue parts again. Anyone who's ever built a, ta or should I say, a Dragon Sherman will uh, be very familiar with this sprue. We have our um, direct vision ports for the direct vision cupola. We have our periscopes, headlights, and swivel periscopes for like the uh, driver and co-driver, for example. Then we have our wonderful Dragon card. Oh my God, this is like back to the glory days. So we have our cartograph decals. Again, these are all sealed. I'm not going to open them up because I don't want the damp getting at these. These look really nice. We have like the blacked out um, star. Basically, a lot of the tank crews would paint over these either in black or olive drab, as you know they want to put a big like aiming point on their tank, which makes perfect sense. We also have our individual slide molded. Um, Rubber rims for our road wheels. We have a few spare ones up here for some reason. And then we have some nice photo etch for both our fenders and our, um, 
our front fender and our... So moving on to some of the steel parts or metal parts supplied in the kit. So we have an aluminium turned barrel, several springs and look like piston covers for the HVSS suspension. So that's a nice little bonus. So it means like you get you get to keep the one piece uh, slide molded plastic barrels, which are always good. Very easy to um, uh, to get a good result out of those barrels as the seam lines aren't too intense. So unfortunately, Irish rain has found us, and there's not much we can do about that. So I'm sorry about the noise. So let's start moving on to some of the plastic. So we also get Magic Track. Um, track links here which is very rare now uh, for Dragon to have magic track in their kit to normally give us DS which for the Sherman family DS isn't necessarily a bad thing it's just that they, they, they don't bother actually putting any type of protective shielding like they used to, they just put them to like a cardboard sleeve so you've stopped them from being damaged and now they just throw them into the box because you know, Dragon doesn't care about such things anymore but the detail looks really nice on these I'm not seeing any sink marks, um, so it should be just minimum cleanup, if any. So that is a nice bonus. So the first major piece of plastic we have is the lower hull tub. We do have detail on the underside, such as the scape hatch, several reinforcing ribs, as well as uh, the engine access uh, plate, as well as some drainage um, plugs. The detail is pretty good. We have the mounting arms for the return rollers already molded in. Some nice rivet detail on them. The buggies will sit in separately. And same on both sides. So pretty nice. It will be interesting and also we'll see the way that the actual mounting lugs for the um, transmission cover are actually molded in. Normally the, with a lot of uh, Dragon kits you actually have to glue these parts in. So that's quite good, and we'll see now how well the transmission cover will fit, as the transmission cover is kind of notorious um, on Dragon kits that don't necessarily fit that well. Then we move on to one of the larger sprues supplied in the kit. So it is quite massive. So this is from their A4, A2 tree, and we've seen this in both the um, M4, A176 that we're building as Lafayette Pools vehicle and as well as the M4A2 Tarawa that we built several months back. So we're going to see a lot of stuff that uh, should be quite familiar to us. We have our A3 style engine access hatch um, rear deck here and then the A2 variant without the engine uh, access hatch and just the two deflector um, exhaust mounting brackets basically. It's a blank piece. The plastic is a little bit rough on this sprue. So this is a much older sprue, so the tools look pretty rough. Uh, we have our brush guards for our periscopes look okay. Our brush guards for our headlamps and convoy lamps look way overscaled. And we do have we actually have no photo etch replacement for those parts. We do, it would appear, have a hollow uh, barreled M1919 um, 30 cal bow machine gun mount, which is nice. Our return rollers. They should be okay with some cleanup. I am seeing some heavy seam lines on certain parts here, like the um, exhaust mufflers, for example. Some pretty heavy seam lines. The tools are very rough. And also the filler caps are a little bit spongy as well. We have our travel lock it's okay it's some nice detail on that it's relatively sharp and then our a2 version engine deck the small doors and then we have our upper hull so they tried this to make one upper hull for both a2 and a3 and that the a3 doesn't have these two pieces here that we're gonna to have to sand down which is gonna be a right pain in the ass but luckily there's no detail near it that we can accidentally shave off Still, it's a bit um, annoying that we have to do that. We do have a nice cast um, or foundry mark here on the upper hull. And I was trying to figure out at the time why did they have us removing the various mounting brackets for the uh, travel lock and 
the headlights and that's actually for the Apple K armor that's going to weld on on top of this so we have to remove all that so that's not really a problem we can do that messy if you really want to because you can just you're going to be slapping on an extra basically glazes plate on top of that so that's that sprue again we've seen it so many times no point going too far into it then we move on to G sprue which is from their M4A2 A3 set and again we get the larger style um, engine deck which is quite synonymous with A3s we get our um, deflector for the exhaust we get another version of the rear engine um, cover here with the hatch so I'm not sure which one we're going to be using I imagine it might be this one and the moulding on this one seems much better, it seems much sharper. We do have uh, track links here, individual track, track links. And the, one of the more earlier patterns of Sherman tracks. So detail is pretty okay on this, it's much sharper than it is on the other sprue. Though there is a little bit of flashing on these spare track mounting um, racks here. Onto D sprue. Now D sprue is the special applique armor that is found on Thunderbolt 7. So there is basically big squares of plastic, it's not much going on here. And I believe the Asuka models one has these in resin. Um, either way it can work. You can easily fabricate these yourself if you really wanted to. So they're just big blocks. We do have some rivet detail or um, screw detail here. You can see some of the um, impressions for that. Then we have our upper glazes plate applique armor here, which was basically, from what I can understand, was they actually just cut off um, a glazes plate from a knocked out German and welded it back on top of their own one. And we have some of the imp um, depressions here for mounting the travel lock and um, the headlights and the brush guards for said headlights. It's pretty right, it's okay, it's a newer sprue by the looks of it and it seems to be a bit sharper. And then we have our cheek armor for the, uh, the turret. Again, not much going on here. It will make give the tank a bit of a different appearance, but that's about it. On the H sprue, so this should be very familiar to us if you see my M4A176 review. So this is the same T23 turret with the loader split hatch. So we get two versions of 23 uh, turret. We get one with the split hatch and one with the smaller loader hatch. Again, there is the, the split cabula, or cupola should I say. Some nice detail there. It's pretty sharp. We do have some very small cast numbering, which is always nice to see. We have some spare track blocks here. And then various deflectors. And then we move on to B sprue, which is marked M4A2A3. So you'll see this is very kind of standard dragon operating procedure. They just throw different bits from different kits to make whatever variant you want. So we have a big piece removed here out of this part. Then we have our gun mantlet. Looks like we have a bit of flashing here in the key. That's meant to be a circle. Actually, I think, oh, these are the gun barrels. So they actually, they've actually they actually removed the gun barrels by the looks of it. If I recall from the other kit. We have our division, or should I say, our direct vision hatch for the, the commander's cupola, as well as the small hatch for the loader. We have the actual direct vision cupola here. We have a very weirdly proportioned 50 cal machine gun or HMG. It's not very well done at all. The 30 cal is a little bit better. And I believe, yes, they both have hollow muzzles, so at least they have that going for them. We have a two-piece um, 50 cal 100 uh, round box, I believe. I think that's the 50 or the 100 round ammo box. So yeah, the detail is okay. We have our pistol port, and then we have our, our second option for the 23 turret. So this has the, the smaller loader's hatch. We do have some nice um, cast texture. Uh, so we do have some nice cast texturing as well as foundry and cast numbers. So that's always nice to see. The pistol port is 
molded into the turret so um, you can't model that open without having to cut this part away should you desire and then that is B sprue so we get two of Q sprue and well actually there are two Bodomer Q sprues and this is our running gear so we're just going to take a look at one and we actually have another cr uh, smaller Q sprue here for some reason too so we might have a few um, Easy 8 style, style wheels left over which is good for another Easy 8 build I have planned in the future. So we have pretty okay detail here. Th this seems to be a newer sprue. The detail seems much sharper. And we have our various buggy details such as the uh, various uh, suspension uh, pistons as well as the buggy arms themselves. From what I gather from looking at the kit instructions, this, these assemblies do appear to be somewhat workable, but we will take a look at that when we get around to building this uh, kit in the very near future. We do have good rivet detail on the road wheels, and then on this sprue, or the smaller part of Q sprue, we have our drive sprockets. Details pretty nice actually, that's quite, um, it's quite well done. There's one thing I don't like what they do is how they do the um, the, the locator tabs for the sprues. Um, sometimes it's a little bit hard to see where the actual tooth of the sprocket ends and the sprue begins. So be kind of careful removing that. Give yourself plenty of space so you don't accidentally cut it too short. It's happened to me once or twice in the past. We have our return rollers, our, dri our final drive, our idlers, or our tensioners should I say. And then the final sprue it's just pretty much Q sprue once again and just with the larger part cut off and exactly the same we have our road wheels and our swing arms for our buggy assemblies so as you can see there's not a lot of parts in this kit it's, uh, it should actually build up very quickly so there you have my quick and straight to business inbox review of Dragon's M4 A3 E8 Thunderbolt 7 in all I'm pretty um, impressed by this kit so far as in the detail for the most part at least with the newer sprues looks pretty well and pretty up the, up the par however if that chap's uh, wordpress blog was anything to go for this kit might be a little bit of a pig but we'll see so do join me when we build uh, Creighton Abrams M4EA Thunderbolt 7 uh, in the very near future so keep an eye out for that I've been Shane thank you for watching and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye-bye.